I request, if you could, sir, um, you know, that 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 night, that that particular time, that time when he gave up the ghost, which it would some of us call Good Friday. Right. Mm. Can you expound on that or give us a little teaching on that somehow? And it doesn't have to be like a long exegesis. But, you know, if it is, that's great. But, you know, can you kind of, uh, you know, help us in that area or explain for some of those in the audience that are listening that aren't really familiar with what what happened on that night what happened that day that that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying is it okay or sure that's okay we can Thank go you. we can do that um so you want so you you want that what happened to him leading up to the cross yeah, just that 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 just say that Friday. Okay. You know, it actually Thursday. started it actually would have started Thursday night. Okay, so uh, and so here we, right. so so here we go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, it would actually started so the the Passover would have been so this is a this is one of these historical thingies, but during this time this would have fell on the time where they had a, it was a rare, this is what was funny about it. This was actually a rare time. This was actually a rare time when on, on that, where this happened. So what you wind up having is what was called a high Sabbath um, during the time of Passover. Because the way that Passover failed, Passover, and that's why they were taking the meal, the way that the Passover, the day that the, where the Passover would have failed, would have actually been on Thursday. So, and here's and the thing was, it was technically Thursday, Friday, because there was not, if you remember, during this time, even during this time, they were following what would have been considered this. They hadn't gone to the whole Gregorian calendar and all of this other stuff. Right. So they haven't done all that. So this is they were still going to this, doing the use and calendars from basically um, before that time. And they still held to exactly what the scripture taught when it was defined in Genesis, which is the evening and the morning. You know how when it said when, when God was calling out in Genesis that in the evening and the morning was the quote unquote first day or second day it was the evening and the morning that's how the days were determined so that's why when they celebrate if you notice when jewish people to this day when they celebrate the sabbath the sabbath starts on friday night it ends saturday evening mm. so you have your evening into your morning right so and it was the day so by the time it gets to the next evening, it's a new day. Muslims follow this as well, because that's why they will have, if you notice during the time, for like when they celebrate Ramadan and they don't eat all day, but they will eat in the evening, they will break their fast in the evening, right? And then they eat in the evening and everything else. And then they would do another part in time where they would be going back through the day because they will if you look at them, they also follow this evening, morning scenario, right? They got that from Jewish spots, right? So a lot of a lot of places during that time, their days were evening to morning. So the Passover actually took place Thursday night. So everything that you see that's happening, right, is going late into the evening into the early mornings. Keep this in mind. So when they have the Passover meal, the Passover meal probably happens in the early evening. So late afternoon, early evening is when this happens, right? This is an evening meal that is, that's being taken place because it was mimicking what? What was done in Exodus when they put the blood on the doorpost and they, they had sacrificed, they had the meat for their supper and everything else, the unleavened bread, because 
They were told to have the unleavened bread, no bread with any yeast or anything else to make it rise because they were supposed to make what was the equivalent of travel food. And they were supposed to have everything on to leave. So everything that they're wearing during the time of the Passover is we are about to take off and go. And so this is the whole deal. So when everything is taken, so when all of this is taking place and Jesus and his disciples are up in the, and are in the upper room, this is about Thursday evening. So they leave from there. They walk down the road because they're in Jerusalem and they walk outside of the city and they go to the Garden of Gethsemane. It's a place that Jesus and his disciples went to quite a bit especially if they were going toward the Mount of Olives. And so mm-hmm. they went to so they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. It was a place that they would like to go to. So they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and as they were said, as they left from there, they were singing songs and everything else. And so they get to the Garden of Gethsemane. They're hanging out, and Jesus goes to pray. And Jesus takes his, basically what they like to say, his inner circle which is Peter, James, and John. So he takes these guys and they go, he say, come with me. And he was telling them to keep notice. He tells them, keep watch while I go over here and pray. And so he goes over and pray. Everyone remembers what he was saying. You know, if it's possible that this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And he goes back and he sees his disciples sleeping. Goes and sees his disciples sleeping. The disciples are like, he's asking yeah. the disciples, hey, I asked you guys to, st- you know, to watch for me, yeah. you know, and basically kind of wakes them up, say, hey, I need for you guys to watch. And then they left and go back. He goes back and he prays again. And so he goes and he prays again. He comes back again and they're sleeping again. So a lot of people sit there and they will go, well, why can't they, you see, they, they, you know, you'll get the, the heavy religious folks that are sit up there and say, see, the disciples couldn't even keep their eyes open while Jesus was praying. And it just shows that they heart wasn't with God and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> keep in mind that this was, that Jesus was praying and the way things are going, that this is happening probably around, and I quote, probably about between 10 and 11 o'clock at night, somewhere between 9 and 11 p.m. This is happening, okay? The problem with that is is that these guys probably went to sleep at dark. So probably they were already two to three hours past their bedtime. And they just got to finish eating. And we all know what happens when you didn't eat good food and you didn't walk a little bit behind it. Your eyes, and you sit down to wait for somebody. You get that itis. You, you're going to get that itis. <laughs> you're going to get that itis, man. So let's not act like, no, these jokes was just tired. They had already been up all day. They had already been up all day. They had already, you had the, you, all of the stuff and him entering into Jerusalem and, you know, coming in on the donkey and all this other stuff and all this other stuff that started went down and everything else. And, you know, all of these things that led up all, you know, he told them to go in there and, 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 and I've already set a range, but talk to this guy over here and go do this. And all. So they've been running since they've been running since daybreak. A lot of this has been happening since early in the morning. And so now's the end of the day. And normally they would have already been crashed out and sleeping somewhere. But they're still, he's telling them to be up. So now he comes, he sees them, he says, asks them, he tells them, hey, I need for you to stay up. That's when you get the verse, you know, spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, but watch. He tells them to watch and pray. And then he goes back and prays a third time. He 
prays the third time, he comes back. And so he comes back and they're sleeping again. And he just said, sleep on. They're still sleeping. He doesn't wake them up and tell them sleep on. He's just kind of talking to himself and he tells them, yeah, just go ahead and sleep on because it's about to kick off anyway. So in other words, y'all rest up because and there and here, here, here he is. And who's the here? Who, who's the he is? Here comes Judas. And Judas comes with a contingent mm -hmm. of soldiers, of not soldiers, but temple guards. He doesn't come with a contingency of like a bunch of Romans. He comes with a bunch of the temple guards. And you probably had a few Roman soldiers almost as a just in case. So he they come up there. And then by this time, all of his disciples then kind of scrambled around. The other ones that came running over and everything else, the pretty must tell him, hey, hey, look, we've got some people coming, you know. So he gets over there and, and they come up and they say, they ask him, he asked him, who, who are you looking for? And they said, you know, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. And then they said, they all fell to the ground. See, first of all, that should have told you something right there. But, you know. So then they stood up again. They asked him again. And he says, I am he. And they fall to the ground again. And then by that time, Judas steps up. And then, call, and then comes up and says, teacher. And kisses him on the cheek. And that mm. was the sign that mm. those guys were to grab Jesus. So it was an abduction in the middle of the night, really and truly. Mm -hmm. it, was like an, it was like a Gestapo abduction. Wow. And so after everything is said and done, they grab Jesus. Of course, all chaos breaks loose. Peter pulls out his sword, starts swinging, cuts the serve, high priest servant ear off. Jesus heals the high priest, tells, tells Peter to put the sword up because that's when you get the verse where it says all those who live by the sword will die by the sword yes, and so uh, he puts so he puts so he stops hmm. so he stops fighting they grab Jesus they take Jesus off and then they were gonna try to take the other disciples and Jesus basically said let them go. It's me you looking for. Let them go. So they grabbed him and then the rest of them they saw what was happening. They scattered. They ran to the four winds. And they then you had Peter and John circle back around. So when Peter and John circle back around John was known Here's the kicker. Remember, John had John's family had clout. They were rich. So John had some ends with the um, with the some of the people in the temple. So John was able to basically make his way in, even on the sly. Peter kind of went and was kind of just like hanging out in the courtyard. So all of this that's happening right now, keep in mind, this is probably around midnight. And so what they wind up doing is they wind up having a kangaroo court. This was this everything that they did was against the law. Everything that they did was against the law. But they wanted him gone. They couldn't they they couldn't take him in front of all of the people. So they had to do it secretly. That's why they got Judas to portray him. So they get to the, so they're in the area, they're in the, they're in the, the house of the high priest. And the high priest is surrounded by all of his little, all of his little lackeys and cronies. And then you had some that were there who secretly followed Jesus, like Nicodemus, like Joseph of Arimathea, 
and those guys. But then you had a lot of people who were really a, about the law that were not there. They weren't there at all because this whole thing was done by grabbing everybody that was basically lackeys to the high priest at the time. And so they bring Jesus to answer charges of blasphemy. That was the only charge they could put on him. They couldn't put on anything other charge that they could put on him. The only charge that they could put on him was blasphemy. And so that's what they did. But they did it in secret and not out in the open like they were supposed to do. So this was like really and truly, this was sorriness to the highest degree. It really was. So what winds up happening after that is they brought in these they brought in these witnesses, and the deal is that they but they were false witnesses. Here's the deal: if you were following the law, what ha, what was supposed to happen to a false witness? They were supposed to be stoned. They were supposed to be stoned, or they supposed to be put to death, the same manner of death. That's right. If that was supposed to be to that person that they were accusing, that same manner of death should have happened to them. So they bring in these quote unquote witnesses about talk to talk about what Jesus did. And they couldn't do it. Their stories weren't didn't add up. They were too different. And so people were like, but this is not good enough. This is not good enough. This doesn't make sense. This is not good enough. And so they're asking, they're asking, so they're trying to put all of these people in here and trying to put all the stuff together. And so what winds up happening is you now get the whole, um, you, you now get the whole piece that is, um, that happens in the, um, and I'm trying to find it real quick. Yeah. Because it was the Sanhedrin he spoke. So what finally something, so I'll go ahead and read what I'm, and this is the part that I'm talking about, right? And it says, this is Matthew, this is out of Matthew chapter 26, and it starts, this will be from 57 to 67. And it says, and those who laid hold of Jesus led him away to Caiaphas. This is this is from taking him out of the garden, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed at a distance to the high priest's courtyard, and he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. It says, now the chief priests, the elders, and all of the council sought false testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last, two false witnesses came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said to him, do you answer nothing? Why? Because Jesus wasn't saying a word because Jesus knew that this was just all bogus. This was bogus. This was your way of just trying to get rid of me and because you hate me. He said, but Jesus kept silent. And the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the son of God. Now, here's the kicker. First of all, as high priest, he can't put anyone under oath. He can't do it. No man can put another man under oath. Only a man can put himself under oath. Okay? So this goes to go ahead and shows you what he's doing and everything. This is why this thing was so screwed up and so ridiculously done. And then he says, tell us if you are the Christ, the son of God. Okay. Jesus said to him, it is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Boom. Then the high priest tore his clothes saying, he has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have of witnesses? Look now, you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered and said he is deserving of death. Then they spat in his face and beat him. 
And others struck him with the palm of their hand, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ, who is the one who struck you? Damn. That's how they got kicked off. Jesus' own words, the truth of who he was, the truth of his title, his nature, he wasn't going to lie. He wasn't going to say, no, I ain't the Christ. What's wrong with you? No, I ain't the son of God. Who, pff, come on now. At what point did I ever say that? He repeated exactly what he's always said. So it wasn't anything that was falsely that was said about it that stuck. It was his own words. And because they did not believe him to be God in flesh, they called it blasphemy and proceed to beat him. Now, in the courtyard at this time is Peter. And Peter is there. <clears throat> 